change was made during the season in Indianapolis, even though Frank Reich got a contract extension not that long ago. Jim Mercer got to the point where he was exasperated, threw his hands in the air, fired Frank Reich, and hired Jeff Saturday to come in and handle the final eight games of the year. Chris Ballard, Ursay has repeatedly said he'll be back for 2023. He was in front of reporters yesterday to talk about a very disappointing season for the Colts. Here's some of what Ballard had to say. Look, I failed. I'm not going to sit up here and make excuses. Failed a lot of people. Um, highly disappointed, you know, about where we're at, how the season went. I know there's doubt. There should be. Absolutely, there should be. Uh, the criticism, it's warranted. Criticism, you know, regarding my job and what I've done, it's warranted. But I'm still, I've not lost any confidence in what we can build here. You know, we live in a world where failure is not allowed. It's not allowed. You, you fail in this world, we're, and we're doing it at the biggest stage. When you fail in this world, you get canceled, and everybody wants your head, and, right, and rightfully so in some cases. But if you're able to go through it and grow from it, you can reach your greatest heights, and I think we will. Hey, and if you're a general manager in the NFL and you get canceled, you don't get renewed. Very rarely. Dave Gettleman is one that comes to mind. There are a couple of others. John no, Dorsey. It's weird. But there aren't many right. who get a second bite at the apple. I mean, Thomas Dimitrov, 10 years of excellence in Atlanta. Yeah. Doesn't Henry make sense. His name. I don't get that either. To a job. I don't get it. Right. And I, re I really do think that for plenty of owners, the general manager is like the mini commissioner. All of them collectively hide behind the commissioner who's the pin cushion for their, their questionable big picture business decisions. At a micro level, I feel like the GM is the guy that the owner hides behind if the owner is inclined to meddle. And that's one of the realities of these cults. Jim Mercer has become a full-blown meddler. And I think a lot of what Chris Ballard was doing yesterday was taking arrows for Jim Ursay. I failed. No, Jim failed. You're just doing what Jim told you to do. Your boss is who failed. And I know that in the past he hired Tony Dungy and he, he you know, had a Super Bowl champion. I, I get it. But Jim Ursay is more of an impediment than a positive to that team right now, as evidenced by what he did this year. And, and Chris, I suspect Ursay is feverishly trying to come up with an argument that will pass the smell test that Jeff Saturday should get a full year as head coach of the team. That he was coaching with one hand tied behind his back because of the circumstances that Jim Ursay put him in. And under those circumstances, one in seven is an A-plus because I put him in a bad spot. I, it's my fault for doing that to him, so I'm going to give him a full season or more than a full season. And, and look, at some point you got to wonder – why Chris Ballard deals with it. Yeah, right. But I think one of the reasons he deals with it is he knows there's no second act for a GM. Yeah. It's hard to get a second job as a GM. So you better hold on to the one that you have for as long as you can, even if your owner has morphed into a complete and total pain in your ass. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you're saying some real stuff there. Um, it is rare. It's, it's like only some of the great GMs in all time, I feel like, it got second chances. I don't get it. I mean, there's been some really good, awesome ones, like you said, who have you know, hung around forever, get fired, and then never get a sniff again. I don't get that either. Chris Ballard, to me, is you know, one of the better GMs in football. That would be the first thing I'd say. Again, it's a team that's been competitive. He's built the roster to a point to where, you know, again, there's a lot of positives. He's been thrown two you know, gigantic curveballs in his tenure there as a GM. First one was the head coach in the Josh McDaniel situation which then made it go to Frank Reich late in the game, right? So it makes that work, right? And, and then, of course, the Andrew Luck issue on top of that. Uh, I mean, the, they were sitting there, again, at a point here after year one where we were going, oh, my gosh, the Colts are building something. Watch out. With Andrew Luck, they're going to be good for a long time, right? And that messed things up. But I don't know how you look at it and go, oh, wait, the roster's the issue. Isn't the GM's job to build the roster? 
You know, yeah, the quarterback situation's been tough. They haven't got that right. There's probably a little blame to go around with all three, Frank Reich, uh, Ursay, and Chris Ballard as far as that conversation is concerned. Um, but still, man, I look at that and just go, I, I think it's crazy to, to not like what Chris Ballard has done. Uh, yeah, did they misevaluate their offensive line maybe a little bit this year and thought it was going to be more talented? Sure. But we all kind of did. Uh, and and it's just they've had some some bad luck there. I, I think that's what I'd look at. And I think it would be crazy to let go of, of Chris Ballard. Well, the, the negative there, though, and yeah. you and I have the same opinion generally about Chris Ballard, but – it's Philip Rivers, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan. Yeah. And even if Carson Wentz was a Frank Reich move, Ballard's involved in the evaluation. I know. And, and Ballard's ultimately responsible. And he would say this. He yeah. would say this. Right. I, I need to do a better job of projecting where a guy is going. I need to be looking at that film. I need to be doing my research. And I need to understand that the guy that we get may never be as good as the guy that we saw on film when we evaluated Matt Ryan's a prime example of that, but Matt Ryan kind of fell into their lap. Like the Falcons exactly didn't plan right. it this way. It created right. the impression the Falcons fully intended to go forward with him. They had leaked to NFL media that they had restructured the contract to reduce the Matt Ryan cap hit for 2022 with the full intention of having him on the team until this Deshaun Watson situation where Watson reached out and wanted the Falcons involved and that broke the relationship between the Falcons and Matt Ryan. And and so the Colts viewed it as a positive. They I don't think they ever stopped to think maybe Matt Ryan's not going to be very good this year. Yeah. I, so well, I, yeah. it's just been it's it's been it's been one after another. And I feel bad for Chris Bowden. It's all started because Andrew Luck decided he didn't want to play anymore. And that's his prerogative. And, you know, Ursay was was belly aching about it this season. Look, sorry, that's part of the risk you take. And why would you want a guy who doesn't want to play it's like having a, a soldier in your military that doesn't want to be there you don't want to put a gun in that person's hands if they don't want to be there you don't want a player who do, who's out on the field if he doesn't want to be there so it happened you got to move on from it at some point and you know one of the other things Ballard said Chris I I, I I need to see the quote again just to make sure I'm not misremembering it but I get the impression they're going to be very aggressive about exploring going all the way up to number one and getting the pick you know get getting getting the next Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, get that first overall pick. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ursay's already told Ballard, do whatever you have to do to go get that first overall pick so we can reboot this team with our next great quarterback like we did in 98, like we did in 2012, and like we're going to do in 2023. Uh, I, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, he, he's, he's shown to be aggressive and make moves. He comes from places prior to him being the GM of the Indianapolis Colts that were kind of aggressive and not afraid to make moves. So uh, they would definitely be a team that I'd watch out for. I mean, we saw them a few years ago just, you know, trade away a first-round pick and a bunch of money to get DeForest Buckner, right? So they'll do what they got to do. You're right. You know, hey, the Matt Ryan thing's tough too. I, I think you can almost put that into the bad luck category. I don't think anybody saw that coming. That, that one is – I don't care who Not you me. are. No. I, I mean, and, and forget you and me. You know, crap, what the hell do we know? I'm talking about people around football. I, I, people were shocked by what they were seeing by Matt Ryan early in the year. I mean, that, you know, I'd talk to coaches and be like, man, what's what's up with Matt Ryan? I mean, he just looks weak. He looks frail. He can't even hold the ball when he gets hit. Man, his arms got nothing. I mean, everybody was saying that in football. That's why I felt like it was a little unfair to fire Frank Reich a little. You know, I mean, yeah, bet, you know, and then have to play – uh, you know, a quarterback that's unproven and add a few losses to the schedule there when they were 3-3-1 and one, and they had shown the ability in, in years past to kind of fight through those scenarios and, and end pretty strong at the end of the year. Um, but that was you know, that's that was a tough one. And then I think when you let t talk about, hey, the offensive line didn't quite play the way they thought and they really were stuck in a tough spot. Older quarterback, frail, no arm, and now, oh, wait, we can't run and protect the way we thought we could. You know, that that all was, I think, a little unforeseen. But I think the Matt Ryan thing was a little bit of bad luck more than anything. And I don't sit here and blame Ballard or Reich for that totally and just go, oh, wow, how stupid are they to do that and, and acquire Matt Ryan? And, and, Chris, when I say I didn't see it coming, I don't mean that I was studying every past – No, I know. Matt Ryan right. for the past three years. The position I'm in, the position I'm in, good, bad, or otherwise – People in the league that I know 
know that I have an inclination to stir the shit a little bit from time to time, and I will hear anytime there is a questionable move made. Right. I will hear right from people I know who would say something like. What the hell are the Colts doing trading for Matt Ryan? He's in the process of falling off the cliff. It's going to be a disaster. I heard nothing. None of that. Exactly anyone. right. Exactly. Questioning or criticizing the move. Right. Not a thing at all. It felt like great luck. It was manna from heaven for the Indianapolis Colts to have Matt Ryan fall into the laps after they had run Carson Wentz out of town and nobody knew what they were going to do. Uh, because this leads to the next topic. When they hired Jeff Saturday, I heard from plenty of people who said, what the hell are the Colts <laughs> doing? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I wish I was in their division was one of the reactions that, that I got. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.